Just one hour to go until the polls close in California's midterm elections. Voters in two of the Bay Area's biggest cities deciding on their next mayor. And from reproductive rights to a big money battle over sports betting, we're breaking down the key propositions on the ballot. And the balance of power on the line, the hot races that could determine control of Congress and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's future. And good evening, I'm Juliette Goodrich. It is 7 o'clock on election night. Just one hour left to make your vote count in the midterms. Once the polls close at 8, we'll be bringing you the very latest results as they start to come in. And we do have a team of us right here in the studio. Check it out. Closely following the key state and local races. Elizabeth Cook, Sarah Donchi, Ryan Yamamoto, and Reed Cowan all here to break it down for us all evening long. And the rest of our team is out in the field covering all of the big races across the Bay Area and also reaction from watch parties. And we have live reports on the San Jose and Oakland mayor's races and also the race for governor. All right, a quick look outside at a polling place in San Mateo County. We've been watching those last minute voters and people dropping off their ballots and you do have just a little less than 60 minutes. A reminder, you will still be able to vote if you are in line when the polls close, but you have to be there by eight o'clock. Now there are some big local races on the ballot. We're going to kick things off with the race for mayor in San Jose. Two candidates vying to replace Sam Licardo, who turns out this year. Now Devin Feely is covering Santa Clara County Supervisor Cindy Chavez, and he's there with the latest for us. Devin. Yeah, the election night energy, Juliet, is really growing out here. So, too, are the number of campaign workers and volunteers who have showed up here at the headquarters in San Jose's Willow Glen neighborhood. As you mentioned, the polls don't close for about another hour, and most of those volunteers are busy manning the phones at this point. They want to make sure that every voter gets out and gets a chance to vote before the polls close. Now, some of the issues that are driving voters to the polls in this election cycle are public safety, affordable housing and homelessness. Now, Supervisor Cindy Chavez, who is running for mayor, says she has a bold plan for homelessness that she believes will make a big dent in the crisis if she's elected. We can build affordable housing and we can end homelessness. And some of that's going to be permanent supportive housing. Some of it, they just need an opportunity to get housed. We have to look at every available resource and not wait. Now, both of the candidates recognize that homelessness is a crisis. They have very different plans, however. Matt Mahan's emphasis is on emergency shelter, where Cindy Chavez says a mix of emergency shelter and permanent housing is the ultimate solution. We'll have to see how voters respond to those plans later this evening. In San Jose, Devin Feely, KPIX5. Absolutely. All right, we're going to check back with you all evening long. Thank you so much. Now, San Jose City Councilman Matt Mayen is challenging Cindy Chavez, and Katie Nielsen is covering his campaign. Katie. Julia, we're here at the campaign watch party in downtown San Jose. You can see just how many of Mayhem supporters have already made it out here. They're waiting until those first poll results come in. Mayhem is a current city council member and has been involved in recent debates about how to handle the issues of policing and public safety. Mayhem says he wants to increase the number of police officers in the city, but wants to do it in a way that makes sense financially without growing unfunded pension obligations. He also believes that the police department itself needs more oversight. I will make police staffing a priority, but I will not do it in a way that is unsustainable and pushes off the burden of ser future service cuts to future generations. We have that independent police audit function that is able to investigate complaints so that the public can trust that we are not simply leaving the department to police itself. Mahan is expected to show up at the watch party within the hour. Now, I just spoke with his campaign manager and said, how do you feel about things? He said, optimistic, but they don't know if this race is going to be too close to call tonight. They said they're hoping it's a landslide, but based on all of the polling numbers that they have been looking at, they said it could be a couple of days before we actually know the outcome. Live in San Jose, Katie Nielsen, KPIX5. Yeah, very true. We'll be covering it in the evening and also waiting to hear when he does arrive. All right, Katie, thank you. Now, we're also covering the race for governor. Governor Newsom is expected to easily win his second term tonight, and he's facing off against Republican challenger Brian Dolly. And Betty Yu is live at a watch party at Manny's in San Francisco with the latest on that for us. Hi, Betty. 
three things that you're going to do tomorrow. Hi, Jules. That's tomorrow. right. We're at Manny's right here now, in the mission. And take a look. It is a packed house. State Senator Scott Weiner just finished speaking to the crowd uh, a few minutes ago right now. Manny, the owner, is addressing the crowd. Now, the governor's race is a bit of a sleepy one because many would say it is already decided. Governor Gavin Newsom is up against... Republican State Senator Brian Daly. He's a little-known Republican from the town of Beaver. Of course, Newsom is the overwhelming favorite in this race, expected to easily win. In fact, he barely campaigned in California this year. Instead, he spent money on things like abortion rights in other states like Florida and Texas. Now, Daly is a farmer. He owns a trucking business, and he has criticized Newsom heavily for being focused on a presidential bid a point that Newsom has denied. Now, Newsom spent the final weekend of the campaign traveling the state to support other Democratic congressional candidates. Uh, I feel very confident about what's happening in the state. I feel more confident than the punditry about what's happening in the country for no other reason than you look at the polls. So many of these races are toss-ups are in the margin. And not just the Senate race, seven plus that are in margin. Uh, but many of the House races, and I had the privilege to understand them more granularly because I've been out on the campaign trail for a number of congressional candidates the last three days. The everyday, hardworking, middle-class Californian governor is suffering from the policies you put forward. Now, Newsom said that if he is elected tomorrow, he will be focused on two things, homelessness and tackling crime. He said specifically that we have to clean up our streets and sidewalks and simply clean up this state. Jules? You. The universal big issues for that as well. All right, we appreciate that. We'll check back with you. Now, Elizabeth Cook is here now. Also, a big night across the country where control of Congress is at stake. You're going to take it away for us there. This is the headline of the night, Jules. Mm -hmm. What happens tonight could determine whether President Joe Biden can get anything accomplished for the next two years. Now, as you know, Democrats have held both chambers of Congress for the last two years, but by a very narrow margin. Let's start in the Senate. First, we're watching our current California Senator, Alex Padilla. He is running to keep his seat after he was appointed by Governor Newsom when Kamala Harris became the vice president. This one won't really be a surprise. Padilla is the heavy favorite to win here over Republican Mark Moisier. But there are some very competitive Senate races across the country. Here are the six states to watch. We have Nevada, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and New Hampshire. Now, these contests are considered toss-ups in states like Georgia and Nevada. It's a tight race between Republican challengers and the Democratic incumbent. Pennsylvania, another razor-thin race. Now, here's why it's so important. The Senate is now split with 50-50 with Vice President Kamala Harris as the tie-breaking vote. Now, if Democrats lose just one seat, Republicans could take the Senate. Now, in the battle for the House, California could play a pivotal role. We're, we're a very heavy blue state. There are two races. We're watching the Central Valley, and we're also watching some races down in Orange County as well. Well, both districts are considered toss-ups. Now, all 435 House seats are up for re-election, or up for election, I should say. Democrats hold 220 seats. Republicans have 212, very thin margin, and that could all change tonight. A shift of only five seats would transfer control of the House to Republicans. Now, if the House takes control, Kevin McCarthy from Bakersfield here in California is poised to become the new speaker. And there is a big question about current House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's future. If Democrats lose the majority, they could be pressure for a change in leadership there. Let's get now to Reed Cowan, who is with our political analyst, to talk about the ramifications of all of this. What does this mean? Yeah, you really set the scene very, very well. And we're lucky to have some smart minds in the studio with us tonight. I'm joined by University of San Francisco political science professor James Taylor and San Jose state professor of political science Donna Crane. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. So let's start general now that Liz has sort of set the scene. What are you watching for tonight? What I'm watching for is Katie uh, 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 Porter in Orange County in District 47 to see how that goes, because I think depending on how that goes, there are about five other uh, districts and competitive uh, seats down there that will tell us whether or not this is going to be a, a red wave. If Katie Porter goes, uh, you might see some other popular national Democrats go. And as the lead-in suggested, Nancy Pelosi might end up retiring as she's hinting after this attack on her family that, you know, this is probably the end of the road for her. 
She's definitely signaled that she will make a decision based on tonight's result. Uh, Professor Crane, what do you think about this? What do you think about the balance of power? What do you think about where we're headed tonight? A lot of people are watching social media. They're watching the returns here on Five. We're really having a community conversation, right? Mm -hmm. What's this conversation going to be around the water cooler in the morning? Oh, well, I'm watching for two main things. I'm watching for control of the Senate. Uh, Mitch McConnell would like to be majority leader again. And if McConnell takes over the Senate and Republicans take over the House as well, then we're looking at a real split power between a Democratic White House and a Republican Congress. I wouldn't expect anything productive to get done in the next two years. I'm also looking at something uh, a little bit more abstract. I'm looking to see if some of these election deniers, some of these um, candidates who have said the 2020 election wasn't fair. I'm looking to see if they win their races for secretary of state in some key states. Those are the places that Donald Trump and his lieutenants were calling into to try to get some changes to the slates of electors. And that could actually portend something really important about whether our our presidential election will go smoothly in 2024. You talk about that race. I've talked to my contacts in Nevada, and they think that one of the election deniers very well could get in. So much more to talk about tonight. Thanks, James and Donna. We'll be getting all of their insights as we cover the races and what they could mean to our community.